seeing Paul South grade three. He had a couch and he was really fine, ready to go to the floor. And one hour ago, he started to have him, he started to have difficulty breathing. So, Carlos, how are you feeling? Oh, I can't breathe. You want us to raise your head a little bit? Would that help? What's the matter? Chest hurts. Chest hurts. hurts. Okay. Can you can you point to where it's hurting at? Is it right here in the center, or is it somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the center. It's right here. Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said, "Get your mask." Get a mask. Yes, I will look. All right. Take a deep breath. Big deep breath. Ten liters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep on taking a big breath. We get a chest X-ray. Mm -hmm. You want to do a breathing treatment on it? Yeah. Well, I didn't hear reason. Okay, check. Sir. It might check be from his pain. It might be him guarding from the chest pain. It could be. From the sternum. Or one of his grafts went down his chest pain. He has could already be. two chest tubes. They, they were work, working well. Have they stopped putting they stopped working? Uh, no, no. Any they output worked. in the past? Uh, they work well. And this is a sudden onset chest pain? Yes. Uh, yeah, let's let's get him on uh, some CPAP. Sure. Didn't look um, significant for anything in the bugs. So one of the things we're definitely concerned about is whether or not he can handle this uh, right. extra stress. He's going to wear out. I think if given that PAO two, we probably need to look at innovating this yeah. patient. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's get set up in a controlled environment. Let's get the glide scope. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, let's look at the innovation report from surgery, make sure that they didn't have any difficulty. Mm -hmm. No difficulty. Uh, Mr. Cable, we're going to have to put a breathing tube in, okay? You're not able to take in enough oxygen, okay, even with this big mask, all right? So give me some medicine and go to sleep. Okay. Yeah, right. Give me some medicine, go to yes. sleep. Embryo since how long? I'll put a breathing uh, tube in. Since last night. Okay, we're so good. Do you need some cricoid? Our pressure, just let us know. No, it's okay. There we go. There. And there's our x ray. Now right, we're at 21 at the. Mm -hmm. So it definitely looks like we got a little fluid in that right lung. Mm -hmm. We don't see a collapse lung, correct? No. Nope. It doesn't look like it. You can see the chest tubes here. Here. This one is a little out, but it's. Positive feeds. Uh, Sats coming up again, and then uh, after he's been on this, we'll go ahead and get another AVG and see how we're doing. Okay. Um, it's this, order. What's that? It's order. Thank you. Vaso present has a better uh, outcome with uh, pulmonary mm -hmm. items. Let's do Vaso for now. Vaso. Um, uh -huh. okay. Let's just do a low dose Vaso. Okay. How much? Let's start. Uh, let's do 2.4. Perfect. Okay, Vaso breathe. Should we both? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable uh, option too. Let's go ahead and get the prompt. That's a great idea. Sure. Thank you. Okay. 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 Pressure's coming up nicely. It's 134 of 77. Mm -hmm. Heart rate's still a little fast. There's no objects. No. Going all the way down for the body. No the, the, the okay. ground is clear. Mucus body is clear. Any yes. indication that you have uh, collapsed lobes? Specifically mm. right side? Not really. Okay. Let's get a, let's get a bedside, bedside uh, cardiac ultrasound. Make sure we're not collecting fluid around the yeah. heart. Sure. Make sure there's no evidence of cardiac tamponade. And you want to do this, I'll walk you through it. And then the aortic. The aortic. Yeah, and you can tell the aortic, well, the aortic's got this fish mouth appearance too. Yeah. But, um, Looks like the LV's not really Yeah, I agree with you, Andy. I think our, yeah. our LV's have problems. And that could be evidence yeah. of 
compression from any kind of fluid. So let's just talk to our surgeon, get him in here. We might need to do a pericardial window just to be sure. So I want the expert to look at that. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So good job overall. Uh, I think it was done very well in a stressful scenario. I like the initial response, the like going step was approach, and uh, then Brian took the leadership. Uh, before we start, I want to ease out and uh, relax a little bit. I know how you feeling. And um, it was a little stressful. Um, I was not sure really what other studies we can do. Um, I think we escalated uh, uh, like airway management appropriately. And, um, how about you, Chris? Well, uh, it's, it's fine to see some images in a book or whatever, but when you're actually trying to figure out what's going on, you I'm like looking at the echo and I'm second guessing my anatomy and I'm second guessing this. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit so stressful. How, how was your feelings? You said very stressful? How, uh, <laughs> yeah, how was this? Brian? Yeah, I think, I think that that's the best comment is in that situation, the stress comes from, gosh, I hope I'm right. You know, it's almost a, <laughs> we got a lung problem. I hope this isn't a stroke. You know, because I'm sitting going, man, I'm glad be way off. Um, so I think that there's a lot of, uh, of that thought process where you're kind of going, what else am I missing? And that's what I, the question I keep asking myself, what am I missing as I do this? And I think that's where my anxiety comes from. So Andy, could you please provide a brief summary of the scenario? Um, so we came to the ICU as a patient who had a cabbage plus a day three. Um, they were uh, having some uh, maybe retrosternal chest pain and hypoxia. Um, we um, increased their nasal cannula O2 without improvement, went to face mask and then NIV. Um, continued to have some chest pain. We ran some studies and troponins were elevated. We had a chest x-ray and we had bedside of pulmonary edema. Um, we uh, also did a bedside ultrasound and then a formal TTE, which showed possible LV dysfunction. Um, we also got our attending to come evaluate and run it. Um, we ended up intubating the patient um, after they didn't improve on, on NIV and uh, saturations continued to not improve. We started vasopressin which we had to escalate to maintain their blood pressure. Yeah, I think that that's a, that's a very good initial diagnosis too, you know, kind of going, okay, I clearly have gotten a saturation problem where I'm not getting oxygen to the patient. So we know the lungs are compromised. I think that, you know, to Andy's point, he's going, man, that, that ventricle doesn't seem like it's contracting very well. And then the question kind of comes in, why isn't it contracting well? Is it a heart failure problem? Is it, is it the fact that it's being compressed by fluid that's around the heart? Um, I think we were trying to work through some of those details. Um, is this going to be fixed by alleviating that pressure? Keeping in mind the scenario that we started with, this guy is you know status post day three of a heart surgery. So kind of going, hey, there could be a leak in there we're not aware of. You know, looking at the chest tubes is a good way to just kind of initiate. Are we bleeding or you know what are we looking at here? Um, <clears throat> so I think that those are all very fair, and it could be a combination to be fair, you know, of those things as well. So there are a few things that you guys did very well, and I must acknowledge that. Uh, one thing I would like to ask, like, uh, when you saw the echo view, what uh, you were thinking? I was thinking that, man, I still need to work really hard at night. My <laughs> next suggestion was, hey, get me the expert in here. Okay. I want that. Tell them it's emergent. Mm -hmm. I want to see some, an expert uh, tell me what I'm missing. Which is, which is very good. So many times if you have doubt, don't uh, continue on your doubt. Uh, ask for help and uh, uh, get something more confirmatory results. So this was the echo view, mm -hmm. as you saw that the next video. But here, this is the parasternal long axis view, or plaques. So this is your left atrium, this is left ventricle. And uh, left ventricle is kind of collapsing pretty mm -hmm. close, looks like it's a kissing ventricle, that's what mm -hmm. So it's showing that uh, it's pretty much empty. Uh, this is aortic valve, which is mm -hmm. not really opening, closing, but looks like some calcification here. And this is aorta, but this is concerning. Yeah, this is right. right ventricle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so right. right ventricle is very dilated, and that's what you see when the RV is big, LV is empty. 
because there is not much fluid is coming out from right side to the left. So same patient got CT scan, and then the CT scan showed this. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good. So it's like a bi almost bilateral PE yeah. kind mm -hmm. of saddle embolism. This was the learning objective for this case, uh, uh, assessing the patient with uh, symptoms of hypoxia or dyspnea, and uh, going with systematic approach of uh, differential diagnosis. So. You guys were, were right on track, except that you missed the PE part. <laughs> I think it was over that part. I think in my concern is that I didn't, I don't know that I missed it as a differential, but I didn't also know what to do with it. I think that I didn't know to up the dosing of the end coagulation at the time. I definitely came in, I was kind of going, does this guy have a history of DVT? Do we know he's mm -hmm. got legs? Is he on a, a sub-Q? So you were suspicious. But of, my suspicions yeah. were there, but at the same time, I don't, I don't know that I, knew how to change my management at that point. And there's no point in doing the D-dimer test after surgery like this. Those are going to come back positive regardless, yeah. It will come back positive and we did have D-dimer in our patient and mm -hmm. D-dimer was little elevated, but you are right, it could be elevated from surgery itself. So it won't give you any any emphasis that what this is PE. Right, especially not acute yeah. setting. But if it's normal, you probably you say you can say this is not PE. Okay. So the the big diagnostic criteria was the way those ventricles looked. Yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, also troponin is also one of the criteria. Uh, troponin can be elevated in patients with PE. Because of the stretch. Because of mm -hmm. the stretch. But mostly we use it as a prognostic marker rather than diagnosis. Ah, okay. So let's discuss the learning points. So what did you learn from this case, Andy? Uh, uh, differential diagnosis for chest pain, hypoxia after cabbage. Mm -hmm get the basis of the, you know, your, your simple um, cardiac uh, echo, but also know, especially some very important, like, pathology, what it looks like. I mean, um, you know, it's frustrating, like, what's, you know, making sure that I know the anatomy, but then, you know, when you see it, and the pathological aspect, you know, kind of knowing, because like you said, that's a classical image for PE, e, you know. I should have picked up. I should have picked up on that, or I feel like I should have. Okay. Uh, um, the two biggest things for me: one, what that image looks like. I'd love to go back to that image just to see that enlarged ventricle next to that collapsed ventricle, and saying this is representative of pulmonary embolus. Um, I think confidence in that image would, you know, allow me to be confident in my diagnosis, which allows me to go to the next step, which is the next thing I learned, and that is how I'm going to change my management knowing this is the PE.